Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends, and thanks for tuning in today. Job 14, 14 and 15 reads, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. Job's ancient and ever-returning question waited a long time for an answer. Weary centuries passed by before fuller insights into things that lie beyond time and human logic appeared. The book of Job, solemn and magnificent, is like a titan struggling with large problems and seldom attaining to positive conclusions in which the heart or the head can rest in peace. Here, all Job's mind is clouded with doubt. He has just expressed an intense longing for a life beyond the grave. His being in the grave is thought of as in some sense a breach in the continuity of his consciousness, but even that would be tolerable if only he could be sure that, after many days, God would remember him. Then that longing gives way before the torturing question of the text, which dashes aside the tremulous hope with its insistent interrogation. But though he has no certainty, he cannot deny the possibility, and so goes on to imagine how blessed it would be if his longing were fulfilled. He thinks that such a renewed life would bring him back to warmth and reality. He thinks of God as yearning for his creature, as his creature yearns for him, and having a desire to the work of his hands, as if his heaven would be incomplete without Job his servant there being with him. But the vision fades, and the rest of the chapter is all clouded over with the uncertainty of this great question, which lies so central to all the meaning of life. These fluctuations in the book of Job of hope and doubt reveal to us the attitude of devout souls in Israel. And if they show us their high water mark, we need not suppose that similar souls outside the Old Testament circle had solid certainty where these had but a variable hope. We know how large a development the doctrine of a future life has had in ancient civilization. Maybe men have always had the idea of a future, sometimes as a fear, sometimes as a hope, but not as a certainty, never with distinctness. But we need not go to the ends of the earth or to past generations for examples of a doubting, superficial hold of the truth that man lives through death and after it. This age is asking the question again, sometimes in indifferent disregard, sometimes daring a stark negative without reasoned foundations, sometimes with affirmatives with as little reason as these negatives. The modern world is caught in the Russian whirl of life, and large sections of it have never come as near an answer to Job's question as Job did. There is an answer. Jesus gave it to the weeping woman by the tomb of her brother. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And those words were not only for her, friend, they are for all the world. Notice the difference in his calm, confident bearing in the face of Job's great question, in contrast to all others who have tried to answer it. He claims to have in himself the fountain of life, and that in all its possible meanings. And nor does he confine his words to the present situation involving Lazarus. For his grand words are there for any who believe. And then he proceeds to strip away some of the mystery that has always enshrouded that great and terrible question by the assertion that the life he gives us is immune from death untouched by its icy fingers. The believer shall live though he dies. The living believer shall never die. Physical death is not the termination of life. It touches only the surface life and has nothing to do with the essential personal inner being. He who believes on Jesus Christ secures eternal life. Have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at G-O-D-S-F-I-V-E minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.